Hello, everyone. My name is Niall Richard Murphy. You can reach me at nilm at sitereliabilityengineering.info. And I'm here to talk about SLO alerting and monitoring. Now, the first thing to say is that SLO alerting and monitoring is really done in opposition to the kind of monitoring and alerting we see uh, even today still a lot, uh, which is static alerting, static threshold alerting, etc. It has a number of um, drawbacks, I suppose, uh, these, this kind of common approach, which is that thresholds, normally you're alerting against some threshold when something passes some threshold you issue a page, often those thresholds don't stay relevant. The uh, numbers are relevant the moment they are picked, perhaps, but then with anything like a reasonable online growth number, 4 to 10% a quarter, you generally see that those thresholds don't stay relevant and cause more and more alerting over time as the system grows. And of course, in the relatively recent past, we've seen a number of occasions where there have been quite unreasonable growth rates as opposed to reasonable uh, growth ones. Another effect we tend to see uh, in this kind of alerting and monitoring is that we often choose proxies for user experience like CPU usage for latency, for example, experienced user latency. And those proxies are often chosen because they're easier to choose, sometimes because the uh, right metrics are, are hard to get. And there's, there's often an unclear correlation between the threshold and the behavior or the experienced user, um, user behavior. Overall, this kind of alerting structure generally leads to alert fatigue, which is to say a lot of alerts in a row to respond to, um, not all of which are actionable, possibly the minority of which are actionable. And often in pager storm situations leads to a kind of fog of war situation where the thresholds are effectively set so low that you get a lot of irrelevant pages in a particular incident and it can be hard to figure out what's actually going on. Overall, this kind of leads to an effect where we alert too much about the wrong things and uh, not always actionable, I suppose. If they are the wrong things, they're uh, in, almost inevitably going to be uh, inactionable. And often organizational incentives, particularly with respect to being seen to be responsive to alerts and so on under this kind of static threshold paradigm will continue, if not actually reinforce this. And SLO alerting is really a way out of this situation. It allows us to answer the question, key question of what is it that we can successfully ignore while still maintaining some deliberately chosen uh, amount level of user experience. And so, Introduction uh, to SLO monitoring and alerting. This requires a certain number of things in order to enact. I think the first thing to say is that it requires metrics-based monitoring. This isn't really something you can do with simple up-down kind of measures, at least not easily. It also very strongly helps, uh, if not actively required, that you can do observability of some kind. You might be gathering the metrics, but you need some way to examine them, graph them, compare them with each other, plot them beside each other, and so on. And also, you need to select those SLOs, which is to say, a combination of the, the metrics themselves, the service level indicators, uh, and combine them with the time period that, that uh, uh, the business and yourself decide is the appropriate one for the service in question. Once you do that, and you do the work, on the other side, it provides uh, two very valuable attributes. The first one being that it conserves human attention and energy for things which are actually important and actionable, and that it guards the user experience uh, for a system in actually a much more direct and useful way than the other paradigm for monitoring and alerting. So central, central question for this is the act of selecting the right SLIs. Uh, books could be written about this. Uh, books have been written about this. There will be more written about it. Uh, but in essence, you are trying to choose some kind of metric, some kind of key performance indicator, uh, 
within the service or some uh, aggregate of a service behavior, something that is in essence representative of the user experience and you know business success. Canonical kind of examples here are successful queries per second or successful transactions per minute, but a lot, if not everything, depends on the actual uh, functional purpose of the system in question. And you can think of things like user registration journeys and amount of source code uh, pulled down and uh, applied and so on and so forth as being crucial to this. Now the next question, having selected your SLIs, is to uh, assess what the SLO is, which is what you want, uh, the combination of the SLI and the, and the time value um, with uh, an availability. This table here reproduced from the article in the SLO book shows over an SLO window what level of availability um, in expressed in terms of nines and fives uh, will lead to what kind of window, what kind of reaction time is available in order to respond to the uh, outage in the system and defend the user experience. The colors of the table cell here represent what is effectively uh, respondable to by human action as opposed to automated action. So for example, just doing the simplest possible example we can, uh, basic idea with these kinds of alerts is you're counting events, let's say it's a, a simple kind of web server or transactional system, request response system of some kind, you're keeping account of the successful requests, successfully responded to requests over the total number of requests, Obviously, if these get out of sync, you have some issue. Uh, but just looking at a very, very simple example, we pick a 30-day SLO of three nines for a particular system. That is 2.592 million seconds in total. And so if we're picking three nines, we're picking 100 minus 99.9% .9 of that uh, is the budget that you have to go wrong, which is 2,592 seconds in this case, uh, about 43 minutes. So if you have 43 minutes of a 100% outage, which is to say total requests just increasing and successful requests staying the same, then you have complete budget exhaustion. So having budget exhaustion and alerting at the end of the budget exhaustion is not too useful. So you alert before that. Uh, often you have a slow burn and a fast burn style alert. So you have an alert on 1% loss across one hour and 10% loss across a week. So you can catch both the total outage scenarios and also the degradation or some kind of subsystem throwing off errors uh, every so often, not enough to amount to a complete outage, but definitely something that will affect the user experience if continued. In this example, since 25.92 seconds is 1% of the overall budget, we therefore need to see a 100% outage for 25.92 seconds before alerting uh, with a one hour threshold or 295.2 seconds of 100% outage for the one week threshold. And there we have it, enjoy. <laughs>